Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today I'm going to share with you my last haul of 2021. And it's a big one. <laughs> it's a really big one. I went a little bit crazy in the last month or month and a half. Uh, now, I'm not sure if all of these are going to fit into one video. I don't want to make it too long. So you will know by the title if there's going to be a part two. I am going to try to fit in as much as I can. But to be honest, I'm still waiting on a couple more fragrances. So it is quite possible that there will be two parts. But let's not waste any time today. And let's start looking at what new goodies I got. So number one on the list is from Prada, from their, uh, what are they called? Olfactories line or Olfactories collection, which is like their private line, I think. And this is Dark Light or their Amber Fragrance. Now, if you watched me for a while, you know that this is my second uh, fragrance from uh, this line. I already have... Uh, Soleil Ozenith, which is considered their spicy fragrance. And by the way, uh, the reason I didn't show you a box is because this was a tester and I found this on FragranceNet for a really, really, really good price. So that's kind of what pushed me to get it and I did not regret it. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. So what is it about? But the notes in here are vanilla, amber, aldehydes, musk, and myrrh. Now, the note of aldehydes definitely worried me because, you know, sometimes I'm okay with aldehydes, but when they're really strong, kind of, um, you know, Chanel number no. five type of aldehydes, no, I, I cannot handle that. And so I was worried about that, but, you know, because the price was so good, I just couldn't refuse. So I don't really get aldehydes in here. I, you know, if I didn't know that note existed in here, I would never guess it. It is definitely ambery scent. It's a beautiful, smooth, sweet, warm type of amber. So amber with vanilla, yes, for sure. Is there musk? I can't really say that I'm getting musk in here, but myrrh, yes, there is a little bit of that kind of slightly, slightly spicy and uh, slightly resinous vibe. So, but overall, it's smooth, sweet, warm vanilla with amber. That's really what it smells like. Um, it's not too strong, but at the same time, it's definitely not a skin scent. You know, it performs pretty well. It's just overall, it's kind of a, a quieter type of scent. Uh, it is beautiful. It, it's, it's not like I can say this is, you know, some kind of absolutely outstanding amber that I have never smelled before. No. Uh, but at the same time, it's high quality, beautiful scent. Next, I purchased a fragrance that I talked about in my favorite oud fragrances video. And at that point, I had a sample, but I did mention that I really, really liked it and most likely I would add it to my collection, which is what I did. And this is a fragrance from one of my favorite. Oh, the bottle is falling from one of my favorite houses, Juliet Mad, and it is called Nenshar. So all of their fragrances come in the same white packaging and the bottles look the same as well. So let me throw the box. Here's the bottle. There you go. So what is in this fragrance? Well, because I said I mentioned it in my favorite oud fragrances video. Yes, of course, there is oud in here. There's also rose, there's artemisia, bergamot, there is patchouli, there is incense, benzoin, sandalwood, cedar. So, you know, at first glance, you might think that this is your typical rose and oud combination, but it is not to me. Um, yes, rose is here. It's somewhere in there, but it's not very prominent. Uh, it's more like, you know, I'm getting uh, a few florals mixed together and I can't really separate them. I can't really um, tell you what they are. It's just that there are a few florals. I also get a lot of freshness in this fragrance like 
there is bergamot in here and i think it's coming from that i do get freshness this a uh, fragrance definitely feels fresh i think even in that video i mentioned that this was one of my kind of fresh oods and i do get that and the other element that i get in this fragrance is definitely a bit of powderiness not too much because i don't like too much of powderiness but there is a little bit of it here oud yes it's here but it's not very strong it is evident but again not very strong kind of beginner friendly oud so that's what I get out of this fragrance. A bit of powderiness, um, a touch of freshness, definitely a bit of florals and a bit of oud. Uh, beautiful, beautiful scent. As with all uh, Juliet Matte fragrances, excellent performance. So really happy to have a full bottle of this one. Next, uh, I purchased the fragrance from my wish list, and when I did my wish list update, I mentioned in there that you know there are a couple more fragrances from the wish list that I added to my collection and that I didn't show in that video, and that they will come up in the upcoming haul. Both of them will be in this haul. So the first one I want to share with you is Bitter Peach from Tom. Ford. Yes, I fell in love with this fragrance. I know it got very mixed reviews um, when it first came out and I didn't test it for a long time. I thought I was going to hate it and when I tried it, I couldn't believe how much I loved it. I mean, I am not a fan of peach. I, I Typically, I don't like fragrances that have a strong note of peach but this one is stunning, absolutely stunning. So uh, this wasn't a new bottle. I purchased it from someone, but there was uh, just a few sprays missing from it. So it comes uh, in a box from a set, but I didn't actually get a set. I guess uh, the person I got it from capped the little travel spray and I just got a 50 ml bottle, which is of course more than enough for me. So let me take it out. Here's the stunning orange bottle. Uh, I really love it. It looks so, so, so cheerful and so cute. Well, I'm not going to go through all the notes in this fragrance. There are quite a lot of them. Of course, there's peach in here. Obviously, that's the star. There's also blood orange in here. There are also some spices. I think cardamom. Uh, there is patchouli in here. There is uh, labdanum, vetiver, whatever else. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the notes. I do get peach and I do get blood orange and I am loving, loving, loving that combination of peach and blood orange. I think this is why I fell in love with this fragrance. It just works amazingly together. Blood orange adds something sweet and something juicy to this peach that just makes it scrumptious, absolutely scrumptious. And then I do get a strong note of patchouli and it's the kind of patchouli that I really enjoy. It's it's um, earthy patchouli, but it's not dirty patchouli. I love it. Combination of this patchouli, peach and blood orange, just amazing. I love this fragrance. I really, really love this fragrance. I cannot believe it. This was one of the biggest surprises to me and I'm absolutely thrilled to have it. Next, let me show you a very affordable scent that I actually already shared with you in uh, my winter fragrances video and that is Oud Blanc from Ted Lapidus. Uh, it comes in this white box and also has really, really pretty white bottle. I think this is what attracted me to uh, this fragrance first is I really loved the bottle. I think it looks gorgeous. And so because it was very, very affordable, I decided to try it. So what's in this fragrance? Well, we have our sort of um, standard rose and oud combination. There's also jasmine, there is saffron, there's peach. Here goes peach again. There is patchouli and musk. Now, uh, I don't get peach or any fruity fr uh, notes in here at all. Uh, oh, the cap is so hard to take off. Uh, there is rose, but it is definitely not just rose by itself. I do get other florals in here, perhaps jasmine, although uh, uh, jasmine doesn't really stand out either. It's just, it's like it's um rose with some other uh, florals mixed in here. I do get oud and I do get a bit of sweetness and a bit of smokiness. 
uh, it's a really pretty scent. If you're looking for kind of a affordable, you know, floral oud, definitely give it a shot. Is it something extraordinary, something out of this world, something you absolutely must have? No. And you see the cap is tight. I cannot put it back on. Okay, here we go. I did it. <laughs> so this is um, Blanc, no, Oud Blanc from Ted Lapidus. Really nice, but you know, honestly, nothing extraordinary. Okay, now we've reached a really exciting point in this haul. Uh, I only have fragrances from two more houses to share with you, but... Ooh, these are good. These are really, 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 really good. The fragrances are great. The houses are great. These are pretty amazing. So let's start with the House of Zerjoff. And uh, I've added a few more to my collection. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, why not? <laughs> it's, it's the same name as here on YouTube, so definitely check it out if you're not following me there yet. But if you are, you might have seen these fragrances already. So, yes, I did add a few to my Zerge of collection. And in fact, I will show these to you, but I will not go into pretty much any details about any of them. Why? Because I am doing a Zerge of video, a video dedicated to my entire Zerge of collection where I will share it with you and I will rank it. I think it's going to be a really great one. So what fragrances did I add to my Zerge of collection? Let's start with Cambridge. This comes in sort of their standard purple box. Here we open it. Let me try to fit it in. It's from their Join the Club collection. So it comes in the blue bottle. Here we go. And I was really curious about this fragrance, although I knew that most likely based on, you know, all the reviews that I've seen and read, it's not going to be a unique fragrance. And yes, I was right about that. And all the reviews were right about that. I'm not even going to go into notes. This fragrance is very, very similar to Intense Cafe from Montal, Deluxe from Tiziana Terenzi, and a few others that we have in that category. Is it identical? No. But is it very similar? Yes. Do you need to have it if you have the other ones that I mentioned? Honestly, probably not but I really wanted to try it and I really wanted to have it in my collection and it is beautiful. So again, I'm not going to talk a lot about any of these Zerge of fragrances because they will be featured in an upcoming video dedicated to this house. The second one that I purchased comes in the same purple box. So I, I didn't pull out the box because you've just seen it and it is Starlight. This fragrance kind of was risky, I thought, based on the notes. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And this fragrance probably surprised me more than any other uh, from Zerjoff that I'm going to show you today. I was shocked just how gorgeous it is and how much I love it. This is an outstanding scent. Absolutely outstanding, gorgeous, delicious, strong powerful, absolutely amazing. I think Starlight is one of their newer releases. can't remember exactly when it came out, but I think it's one of the newer releases. If you have a chance to try it, to sample it, to get it, yeah, get it. It's very, very good. And the last one from Xerjoff is Symphonium. Now, I've wanted Symphonium for a long, long time because I know it's a gourmand chocolate scent. I just needed to have it. And I'm going to show you this one because it comes in this gorgeous white box. I mean, this looks stunning. Very, very luxe. Very luxe. So we open it up. The fragrance is inside. Let me show you. Here it is. I mean, all of Zerjoff's packaging is stunning, but this one especially. I just love, love this gorgeous white box. Who cares about the box? Let's talk about the fragrance. 
So uh, this one is, like I said, chocolate gourmand. It has chocolate, it has orange, it has oud, it has a few other notes, but really these are kind of the main players. This is what this fragrance is known for. And yes, I do get all three of these notes. And yes, they are the star players here. The scent is gorgeous, so beautiful, so delicious, absolutely unisex because uh, the chocolate in here is not overly sweet. But definitely men and women can wear it easily, absolutely easily. The scent profile is out of this world. What I found surprising with this fragrance is performance. I mean, when I hear people talk about this scent, I've always heard it being referred to as a real beast, as a real performer. And guys, on me, it's not. It's really not. It projects well, but it doesn't last long at all. For some reason, it disappears from my skin quite quickly. Um, I'm, I was kind of taken back by that, you know. Uh, Zerjov, I mean, pretty much everything performs really well and especially because I heard that this one is a beast um it's not on me at least not so far I mean it is possible that maybe this fragrance just needs to stand and mature a little bit and you know it will perform better I've definitely uh experienced some fragrances that uh behave like that so I kind of hope that that's going to happen but for now unfortunately the performance is a bit lacking but that's just on me. Like I said, majority of the people that I heard from say that it performs amazingly. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, maybe it's just my body chemistry, but scent profile is amazing. And that brings us to the last house that I'm going to talk about today. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the last because I'm going to leave everything else for part two because the video is getting a bit too long. And the house I'm going to talk about is Carolina Herrera and more specifically her Confidentials line. I added, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say because these fragrances are very pricey, but I added two more to my collection from her Confidentials line. Now, both of these were testers, so, you know, that's uh, kind of my excuse. They were <laughs> a little bit um, less expensive because of that. And I, of course, I don't have the beautiful boxes to show you. So what did I buy? Well, first I bought another fragrance that I had on my wish list, and that is Burning Rose. And of course, all of the ones from this Carolina Rare collection have been blind buys because I have, I have absolutely nowhere to sample them. So uh, this one was a blind buy, but because I love rose fragrances, I just thought I really, really need this one. Now, what is in this fragrance? There is black pepper, nutmeg, um, ginger, rose, cinnamon, patchouli, and myrrh. Now, I kind of... This fragrance, um, you know, a few times I thought, okay, I'm going to get it. And then I thought, no, I'm not. I'm going to get it. No. Why? Because I've heard a few reviews saying that they get leather from this fragrance. And as we all know, I don't get along with leather. So that was worrying me about this fragrance. So is there leather? What do I get from it? What do I think about it? Let me start with addressing the leather situation. Yes, I do get leather in this. I really do. But this is the first time in, in my fragrance journey where I am head over heels over this leather. I don't know why. I don't know how. I can't even tell you what's so different about this leather. But somehow in this combination, it works. It just works works. It enhances this scent. It makes it special and I love it. What a beauty this is. What do I get? Well, of course I get rose. Um, do I get, you know, any of the spices? Not really. I almost get a bit of freshness with this rose. So maybe it's ginger. I'm, th I'm thinking of all the spices that are mentioned in here. I think it's ginger that I'm getting more than anything else, but like black pepper and nutmeg, not so much. Patchouli, yes, definitely I'm getting some patchouli. Myrrh, again, not so much. For me, mostly it's 
rose with a bit of freshness definitely with some earthiness from patchouli and something in here maybe a combination of some notes that create that leathery vibe now that leathery vibe is kind of I want to say it's almost always there. It kind of goes in and out as far as the strength of, of this uh, leather note, but it's always there. And I almost get slight um, sparkly, uh, maybe fizzy vibe from this fragrance. Like there is a bit of fizziness somehow in this. It's something, guys, this is so addictive this is so intoxicating it is elegant it is a bit mysterious it is a bit seductive it is gorgeous there's definitely some kind of mystery in this rose to me you know there is like there's something i'm not getting here you know uh, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so glad I got it I, I want to try to figure out what is it about this leather or this note combination that makes me like this leather makes me love it because I have never loved a fragrance that has leather I've always stayed away from it because it just I, I just don't like it but I love it in this fragrance I absolutely love it so burning rose is outstanding and the last one is actually the one that I already showed to you in my winter holidays uh, video. And that is, uh, what is it called? Gold Myrrh Absolute. There you go in this beautiful gold bottle. And actually, now that I think about it, I, I lied to you. This was the only Carolina Herrera uh, fragrance from Confidential's line that I actually sampled first. I did have a chance to get a decant of this one. And completely fell in love with it as soon as i sprayed it i knew this was a must for me i have to track down a bottle and so i'm so glad that i was able to track it down oh my god this is so good i mean i've already raved about this fragrance in that video and you know i'm gonna rave about it here it is so so good so what's in it there is black pepper there's immortal cacao licorice vanilla myrrh you know, I don't get a lot of cacao. I know, I know many people do. I really don't. There, there are slight hints of cacao, but it's not very strong. It's very much in the background for me. I do get a lot of vanilla. I do get um, immortal, which, which kind of adds that, I don't know, smoothness, sweetness, almost... Um, bakery quality to this fragrance i do get a little bit of resinous touches but it's extremely sweet and creamy and buttery and smooth but not in a very gourmand way not in a very edible way but more in a elegant sweet way again another fragrance that is incredibly addictive i love it I, I just, I can't stop using this one. You know, when I got this bottle for the first three days, I just couldn't stop myself. I sprayed this fragrance every single day. And, you know, it's very strange for me to do that because I have such a vast collection. You know, typically I use something different every day and I just could not stop using this one. And even now, you know, my hand reaches for this one all the time. It is so, so beautiful. Anyways, enough about it. Like I said, this is going to be the last fragrance in this video most likely there's going to be part two it might be a short part depending on you know when a few fragrances that i'm waiting for arrive i do have a couple more that i already have that i didn't include in this video uh you know so hopefully if a few others that i'm waiting for arrive in time i am going to make part two so let me know have you been bad like me and purchased too much uh, during uh, the last month or so? Or have you been good? Maybe you've been sticking to no buy, which I take my hat off to you. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not very good at that. So let me know. Have you purchased anything interesting in the last month or so? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.